So I always shoot white for that reason, and I can change my backdrop colour depending on the space I have. Um, also, power of lights, it so up my lights so I'm not used to them. I'd have it power a bit lower, if that background's been brighter, those highlights on Karen's face won't be there so much. So once I've got my settings, I can move the actual whole studio away from the background, that background becomes darker and darker. And I'm always aiming for a mid-tone grey, and the reason is, when you get to that stage of adding that fake texture, mm -hmm. I have an easier process ahead of me. And the reason I don't use an actual texture backdrop is because I want full control over what's actually going on that texture. So we're kind of into this like position gives it a nice kind of shadow on the side and thing. And that's, again, we bring it. We're, ideally, we bring our reflector back in and things up here. But just showing the, how the umbrella works. It's kind of similar to our kind of beauty dish, um, but just a wider one. We don't have like the kind of nice. Gradient here, anything like that. It's quite a flat look. I see, as soon as you had a chair, as soon as you had a chair, I was like, <laughs> Solar ones which I have, I don't use these, I'm going to use it now because like this is actually going to make a softer light and bring it all the way back. Because what I'm actually doing is I'm putting the light further into the modifier, so what it's doing is it's bouncing inside, then going out, because it's at the back, it's just pouring out. The best way to imagine is imagine the broken one here. Well, this doesn't even come off. This doesn't come off. Pro photo. What's this for? 80 quid. 100 quid. Imagine this is a bucket of water. Oh, if I was to do that, who would come out? This is the little one. To here, and I have a flag here, uh, so that there's no spill on that back. But, sorry, what do you mean by flag? Okay, a flag is the opposite of a reflector. Okay. Uh, you know, you, I use this as a flag, it's possible, but it bounces. Yeah. Red onto people. Contact and reflective light is actually a lot more visible than you'd think. It's really strange. Going back to visual effects again, it's strange how these are things you just don't think of until you have to do visual effects. A lot of it. If you are working in Photoshop and doing composites, it's something to really think of. If you're putting someone in an environment they don't belong in, or weren't shot in, should I say, contact reflections are a thing. The bottom of your shorts actually red. They're not the colour of your shorts because mm -hmm. the red yeah. seat is reflecting red light onto your shorts. Mm -hmm. If I cut you out and put you on a green chair, it would look odd because there's a little bit of red that I can't really see with the naked eye, but there's red there and it does exist. When it comes to like triggering, that will only speak to the brand it's for. So if I have like a bunch of newer lights and a bunch of Bowen's lights, I can only control however many of that brand. My newer lights are now just my spares. But I originally bought them as little kind of high speed sync lights and I was so happy with the results. I then bought more bowens to meet my other bowens so yeah. that I could trigger them all together. If I change my aperture to make it brighter, it'd become overexposed, which we did. So I made my aperture 1.4, I think, or 2.8, 1.4. And those settings are as dark as I could possibly get my settings at that aperture. Mm -hmm. So this is 1.4, 200 seconds, ISO 100. I couldn't make that any darker apart from maybe putting like an ND filter over the lens. The problem with that is uh, it's difficult to focus if you're putting a pair of sunglasses in front of your lens. So if you want to focus and get that, so what we did is we set it to high speed sync. So this is 4,000th of a second, 1.4, ISO 100. And the difference is, zoom in, you can see totally in the focused eye, but by the time it gets here, it's gone. You couldn't, that's not possible yeah. in a normal two set without high speed sync. Well, it is possible with an ND filter, but then mm. you have to set focus put the filter on, take your photo. So these aren't things that take time. It is a just no situation where it is. If you don't have shoots to, to know why it's too bright, you can just go and fix it as you're going along. I think sticking to the dogma of film in a digital age is slow. So I'm not saying, I'm, I'm definitely not, I'm definitely not anti-meeting. I'm definitely not anti-meeting. But I think there are more efficient ways when you have very limited time with a client to get the job done without feeling like you're some kind of amateur or phony or Philistine for not following the dogma. <laughs> Find like random imports, but sometimes they'll be importing like more products in the same day. And if they're all dated, you can go like a day and find six shoots in there and yeah. know which one you're going for. So in that import stage, by clicking that add to collection button, I instantly create a designated folder 
just for the shots of that particular project. Uh, in terms of workflow, this is a very good way. If you're busy and working on different projects, this way you can go to my collection section in the library tab will be that's a particular project. Maybe I want to go back and get this photo again, I know it's exactly there. If I want to this recent import, I can go there. And when it comes to culling, so that's just, that's just the import section, why I do that. Create the collection by selecting all my photos. So I've just selected them all and I can add to collection. I go through usually four at a time. This is a technique I learned in my, when I used to work for nightclub photography. So I can just pick four at a time. I can go, okay, that one's staying. Ah, they're gone. So really quickly, I can go four at a time, that one keep. So I'm doing, sometimes I'm doing a shoot and it's like, bum, shh, 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 shh. Mm -hmm. and I'm just looking for that bit with a perfect pose. See someone's moving like this. I go on a burst mode. And I only also need one. I'm not going to send out all those photos. Color profile is quite important because every camera is different. And all your colors are going to be off all the time. If you don't have a color profile set up for your camera, I would suggest not using Adobe Color, which is the preset one, the default one, is going all the way down and doing camera neutral. See the difference there? The subtle difference, what camera neutral is going to give you is a much more accurate image from what you shot. Adobe Color almost like ruins your photo, especially if you're shooting in like gigs or nightclubs and LED lights flash. They create this horrible like singular color patch on their face. Change the camera neutral now, instantly go. Instantly. The fact that this is not set to default baffles me. If you don't have a color card, uh, camera neutral is your boy. Or you could use color camera portrait, which gives you stronger skin tones, but I think they're too strong as a starting point. Mm -hmm. I usually, if I want to boost the skin tones, I can just do that in like the way that Vibrance does. But it's saturation just like boosts all the colors, whereas Vibrance kind of boosts the tones. It's a really kind of something yeah. So vibrance is like saturation, but only on the tone rather than the full overall colour. So it's a lot more subtle. So if you're going to boost saturation, vibrance is probably a better option. You can do it very subtly. You can use a tone curve to increase contrast. If you want to use that method of doing it, like by boosting the highlights and lowering the shadow areas, or you can retrieve some shadow detail by lifting the end of it, things like that. Um, I could just do that in Photoshop. But if you want to keep it all within Lightroom, that's another little step. So if you boost the contrast in the slider, you can boost it more with the tone curve. Or you can ignore the slider completely and do it fully by hand manually, and that gives you full control over it. So if you are boosting contrast, I would definitely recommend the tone curve section over just the slider. But you could use both. Hue saturation luminance is a slider I use actually quite a lot when balancing images. And usually it's from the saturation point where I might, using this little target thing, I can pick a colour and bring it down. So if someone has a like, red patchy skin, I can grab this little target, grab the little red part and bring it down. And you notice it brings down the saturation, but only of those skin tones. Kyron doesn't have red patchy skin, so it's not going to show you much. But so this next bit of retouching, I'm going to go through a whole process. It's going to sound very complicated. Don't worry. It's called fre all. The only thing you need to know about this and write down if you want to do this is called it's called frequency separation. So it's different from a normal brush. A mixer brush. It's essentially a smudge tool. I'm smudging all that data around. Like that. I'm just smudging the colours. Mm -hmm. So now, when I go to the skin, I can just smudge the skin around. Oops, I've turned the texture back on so you can see. So what I'm doing is just smudging the skin texture. So what this does is it evens out all the colour. This is going very heavy handed. I'm doing it on purpose for reasons. So what I'm doing is just going to almost Barbie doll Karen's face. And I'm always painting in the shape of the face. I'm not just but because I duped this layer up, this layer is on effect. This one hasn't had the smudginess put to it. So I've got a layer, like a copy of that layer, an original. And what I can do is go to the, the copy and bring the opacity down. Go all the way down and go back to normal again. So I can control how much I bring this in. Use that to build contrast if I wanted to. Rather than just doing it so kind of contrast slider, I would build it in. And the reason for that is I've got far more control over uh, every single part of it, but I could also, let's turn it off for now, use curves to bring down highlights in certain areas. So similar to the HSL slider before the target, there's a little finger area here. I can say this skin tone here is too bright. If I click on that, it creates a point. If I drag that down, it will use that as its focus. So I'm darkening the skin tones. I can go, okay, I want it to be that dark. But now what I can do, because it's on a curves adjustment layer, use a mask by painting it black to get rid of it, 
and only paint it in where I want it. So any little hot spots of skin, I can just put all those settings that apply to it and kind of bake them in. It'll still be a raw, but we're not losing any quality, we're not losing any quality time. It's still perfectly good quality, but all those settings are baked in. That's how I usually work because it's much quicker. You could open as a smart object in Photoshop, and what I'll do is I'll import the raw with all these settings, but you can then change those settings in Photoshop afterwards if you wanted to. But you can be like, actually, those highlights are a bit too far down. I can then use a smart object in Photoshop to bring them up without going back into Lightroom and fixing it again. But the reason I always go to the top option rather than the bottom option is that file is massive. Like gigabytes and gigabytes when you're working on a batch of 20 photos. Even on my fastest machine, it gets clogged up. So this is a much quicker way of working. But you are baking all the settings. So if you're going to go as an option, you always want to be happy that all this is as you want it to be at this stage. So I'll go to open in Photoshop. And I will show you a quick bit of retouching that adjustment. Rather than changing the whole image, I can control using adjustments layers where it actually happens. So it's great for like if skin's too bright or a dress is too bright. Or you can even use it for changing colour by using like an HSL adjustment. I use adjust so for every little tweak I'm doing that's contrast and things like that, I'll use adjustment layers because I can layer them up and paint them on and off. And that's how you kind of get a full, almost cinematic graded image. It actually boosts my SEO because my website's mentioned in the keywords. Yeah. The metadata contains all this information. Also, when I put images on my actual site, um, I, I actually did a, I didn't do a test, I found it actually by accident, but it was amazing how it worked. When I started doing those headshot days, day long things, uh, I started adding headshot to all the keywords. So, uh, a design page hasn't been those right, but uh, if you search Edinburgh headshot photographer, mm. I went right to the top because all my images now have headshot in them. Uh, so I'm not the high ranking in terms of photography in Edinburgh uh, and Google, but when it comes to headshots, and I'm not even like a headshot photographer, I do headshots, but there are people in Edinburgh who just do headshots. That's mm -hmm. all they do. And they're lower in the ranking system than I am, because I use my keywords. So metadata is quite a good thing. So by taking your Photoshop file back into your collection again, you're, you're setting yourself up for better metadata. But if you add your metadata before you take it to Photoshop, it does pass over. You can keep better tags, tabs on whether it's working, and I'll correct, if you just keep working from Lightroom for your exports and imports. And Photoshop is just for your actual edit. So imagine if I kind of think you prepare it in Lightroom, take it to Photoshop, save it, when you open Lightroom, it'll be there. And then you can continue your exporting process. Rather than exporting from Photoshop, export from Lightroom. Then you're keeping the same system, there's lots of consistency amongst all your images. Mm -hmm. and the client has a batch of images that can be like, okay, these are all the same, I can use these in any way. It's the end of our day, sorry that end was an academic